Now, thanks to 90 Mile Wines and Anytime Fitness Glenelg, it's Chewing the Fat with Bevan Jones. Well, g'day and welcome to another edition of Chewing the Fat. Bevo here today down at Helix Player Management and we're joined by a star of the future in the sport of weightlifting. We could well be seeing her at the Tokyo Olympics next year. But that's a 20 year, 21 year old from Sydney, Kiana Elliott. Great to have you on Chewing the Fat. Thank you so much for having me. Um, talk to us about your journey so far. I mean, you grew up in Sydney, you've just recently moved to Adelaide. Uh, how, how's it all happened and uh, where to from here? Yeah, so I grew up doing gymnastics actually um, and then wanted to pursue that. Someone when I was about five said, hey, you might be able to make it to the Olympics. Um, and that sort of stuck in my head for a long time. Um, did elite gymnastics from the age of 10 and then didn't really work out. I stopped at 14 um, and then had a little foray for about 18 months. I was trying to figure out my identity away from sport because I really, really wanted to do gymnastics to, to a high level. Struggled a little bit and then actually stumbled into weightlifting, um, stumbled to find my coach, started training with him, um, and then it all in weightlifting happened really, really, really quickly. Um, and then what it culminated in more recently was that my coach decided, um, well, basically it, it happened that we could no longer really operate in Sydney. My coach went, no, nah, I'm done here. I'm leaving, I'm going to Adelaide. And I was like, well, I'm gonna try and make it to Tokyo. I better leave. <laughs> not much for me in Sydney, and I sort of, I sort of went. Well, well, I've not really got much to lose. Um, why not jump ship? It's only another state. Um, <laughs> head down and, and see what I can make of this. And uh, how are you finding your time so far in Adelaide? You've only been here for the six weeks. Obviously, it's a, a lot quieter than Sydney. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I've been here now since. So we moved down in March. So it's it's been a little bit longer than six weeks. Um, but absolutely loving it down here. It took a while to get settled, but it. The place is lovely, just so close to the beach, so close to the hills. I've just absolutely loved exploring everywhere. And have you had a chance to have a pie floater or a Farmer's Union iced coffee as yet? Or? I have had Farmer's Union <laughs> iced coffee. You know, I did an interview with um, um, with Ben Hook from The Advertiser yeah. very early on. And he goes, right, gives me a quiz. He goes, <laughs> and I've got none of the answers. He goes, what's pie floater? And I'm like... Um, <laughs> and he was losing his, um, he was just absolutely losing it. We did this with um, one of the coaches at Sassy and he was losing it and I had no idea what was going on. The only question I could answer at that stage was that you take, he goes, what's the road that connects the CBD to Glenelg? And that was the only question I could answer. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> so you haven't had a pie floater yet either? I have not. No. No. Oh, they, honestly, they look terrible, but yeah. they taste amazing. I really, recommend really. it, so get involved in one of those. So, okay. yes. And now recently you just got back from the Pacific Games. How'd yeah, that go? Yeah, so the Pacific Games was awesome. And we were in Samoa. It's a multi-sport event. For a lot of the Pacific, it's 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 their games. It's a big multi-sport event. We've got, I think there were about 5,000 athletes from all the Pacific Islands, all different sports. Um, Australia had been invited into the last Pacific Games in 2015 and this was the second one we were invited into. So we weren't in every single sport, they sort of selected and said hey come do weightlifting, come do I think rugby sevens, a few other sports um, and it's just it's just fun to get in a games experience um, and so what was it, it also doubled as our Oceania Championships and it also tripled as our Commonwealth Championships. So they just sort of lumped it, the organizers lumped it into one. We had one day of competition and the results counted for each. Um, the important one for me was the Oceania Champs, just in the way that Olympic qualification works, it held the most weight. Um, I ended up winning that, so. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Worked really well, so I was really, really happy with that. And I had a really great comp over there, obviously being over there in different conditions. It's really, really hot and really humid. <laughs> so be a wake-up call here then. I know, right? <laughs> um, and just things like there's, you take it for granted, there's no air conditioning over there. Um, or there is in some places, but they didn't happen to be where we were competing. So it was a very different experience to what you would normally have, but it's always fun trying to deal with those adversities. Um, and, and to come out, as I did come out, I had a really great competition. Um, ended up snatching 99 kilos and cleaner jerking 114. Um, I think the 99 was an Oceania record. Um, so I was pretty damn Incredible. stoked with it. Um, and yeah, really, really proud. 
um, to be able to stand up on that podium and, and have the anthem played because that's a pretty phenomenal feeling. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Obviously headed in the right direction towards Tokyo as well. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, and you mentioned before that you were a gymnast as well and you had a bit of a go at diving. <laughs> How did you, you find that? So I think it's a pretty typical move for a gymnast to go into diving and one of um, my teachers at my school um, was a gymnastics coach as well. And she was like, hey, I know you don't really like water, <laughs> which I never had, because she'd um, she got me to do diving as part of the school program when I was still just doing gymnastics and I was terrified. Anyway, <laughs> post-gymnastics, she was like, yeah, I know you don't really like water and, and all of this, but maybe give it a go, come along. And so I did, and it was all right. I got over my fear of the water pretty quickly. I still didn't really like it, but I gave it, I gave it about six months um, and then it was kind of fun and learning new skills and having a bit of focus and, and training but by the towards the end of it I sort of realized I was dreading going there every week and I was like hey why am I doing this I don't, I don't have any because this was still for fun for me I'd set no goals in diving. What? Do you call jumping from the 10 meter board well, doing flips fun? Yeah. Seriously? <laughs> never went off 10 meters. Oh, did you? So I was in, um, they had the elite group training out of um, the Sydney Olympic Park and then they had a second group which was sort of like recreational, some of the older guys that didn't want to train elite as well as some of the kids that were coming through um, and I felt sort of strange like being like a newbie but older and anyway we're in that group um, <laughs> and I'd get to the end of the session and the coach would be like right five minutes free time go and jump off the 10 meter and I'd, I'd always be like no. <laughs> Don't blame you. No, give me anything else, but unless you force me up there, I'm not going up there. <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of respect for those people that do. Let alone jump off the 10 meter, but then do flips as well. You've got to be it's joking. Phenomenal. So, yeah, incredible stuff. I think you chose the right sport in weightlifting there. <laughs> so, hey, I've heard as well that some of the boys get a bit jealous because you're lifting a heck of a lot more than what they are as well. So, <laughs> is there a bit of banter there with the lads? Oh, there's always banter with the lads, and some of the best um, teammates I've had are. Uh, teammates they're guys um we had a great club back in sydney and and the guys that used to train there you knew about weightlifting is anyone of any level can train together so every newbie starts with a broomstick um and then the 20 kilo bar if you're a boy or a 15 kilo bar, bar for a girl everyone can train in the same environment very different to gymnastics where the higher level groups the more skilled groups are very much split from the new groups but everyone in weightlifting trains in the one training session. So no matter whether you're snatching 60, clean and jerking 80, or you're snatching 150 and clean and jerking 180, you can train together and you can feed off each other and you feed off each other's vibes. And it's just, it's a great environment. Obviously, I think particularly with guys, but not, not just with guys, with girls as well, there's ego that comes into it. <laughs> um, and that's always fun, especially with, you know what, you see it more if you go ever into um, a commercial gym. And start lifting, and the guys look. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. <laughs> They're probably trying to just like load extra weight onto the bar and try and match you, and then I realise. You oh, can no, so okay. see it though. Yeah. If anything's ego driven, you can just pick it straight away. Yeah, yeah. Oh, terrific stuff. And uh, next year, obviously, Tokyo is 2020, which is super yeah. exciting. Yeah. Um, what do you have to do for, between uh, now and then to sort of make it to Tokyo? Yeah, we're, so we're now actually now less than one year out from Tokyo, which is crazy because I know it'll go so fast. Um, what weightlifting has done, the International Weightlifting Federation has put together a qualification process and they've said every athlete that wants to make it to the Olympic Games has to compete six times over 18 months. So that period started in November last year. I've done four competitions already. Um, the way you secure a spot to Tokyo is you either end up in the top eight absolute world ranking of your weight category or you top your continent. So that's where I'm aiming for topping the Oceania region, which is the continent in, um, in sports qualification, how that all works. Um, so if I can hang on to my current top ranking in Oceania, that's my ticket to the Games. Very exciting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wish you all the best. So. Thank you so yeah. much. And, uh, and going forward, do you think you'll sort of stay in Adelaide or eventually move back to oh Sydney gosh. or hard to say at this stage? I don't know. I don't know, obviously my family's back in Sydney, but I do really love Adelaide. I love that it's a little bit smaller. It's not quite as hectic as Sydney. Um, I've got to think career-wise what I want to do, and at the moment studies are on hold, so I don't know. I really don't know yet. I don't feel particularly tied to either Sydney or Adelaide just yet, so... Well, well, you're only young, so you've plenty of time to just play yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and going forward, um, is there a sort of money in weightlifting? And, like, sort of how do you... 
Do you have sponsors and things like that as well? Or? No, in the past I've worked with um, a few companies, but, but never really something that supports you financially. Um, I haven't really experienced that. We're very lucky to receive funding from the Australian Sports Commission, the Australian and the Commonwealth Games Association, and that comes through the National Federation to support the athletes. Um, and we're also very lucky that, for the most part, our international trips to international competitions are funded. We don't have to fork out for those, because um, I know a lot of like New Zealand, for example, their athletes have got to fork out if they want to go to a World Championships. So obviously very, very lucky to have that. But on the flip side, on the international stage, I'm competing against girls who compete and train full time. Um, and so it's a bit of a different ball game, whereas I'm working and balancing everything um, and trying to do the best I can whilst making ends meet kind of thing. So yeah, but it's a good challenge. I don't know. I honestly don't know how I would do training full time. I like having that balance and being really, really busy and just juggling everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just going to make sure my priorities in the right place and I'm just putting, making sure I'm putting enough energy into weightlifting. Well, let's hope you're uh, winning gold next year in Tokyo and we're, we're celebrating for you. Um, before I let you go, we're going to do something today. Uh, it's called 90 Seconds Thanks to 90 Miles. So 90 Mile Wines is our sponsor up in Gore there. Um, go and see them. Chris and the guys, um, they'll look after you with some great wine and great food. Um, so we're going to firstly start with your favourite food. Um, chocolate. <laughs> I'm a sucker for chocolate. <laughs> uh, favourite movie? Oh, kids movies, Disney, up. Yeah, favourite drink? Um, coffee. <laughs> Good choice, I think that's everyone's favourite. Pretty standard, <laughs> hey. <laughs> favourite holiday destination? Oh, not a particular destination, but just jumping in the car and, and just going bush. Oh, I like any particular part of Australia or anywhere else? Not really, I just, just like going and almost not knowing where you're going. Good choice. Yeah. I think you actually check out the Adelaide Hills there, North Barossa, yeah. so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful place out there. Um, the uh, funniest coach you've had so far, and why? <laughs> um, it has to be my current coach we took um, a few years ago when it was like, October, November, and we are right, we're going to make a Christmas book of, his name's Marty, we called it Martyisms. So for the two months before Christmas, we'd sit down in training and everything that was funny that he said, we wrote down and we made a full bound book and it was just obscene and absolutely hilarious to put it all in one, in one place, just unreal. <laughs> Good choice, I like it. Summer or winter? Summer. <laughs> I hate the cold. <laughs> <laughs> and now uh, pie with or without sauce? Sauce, always sauce. Good choice. Yeah. yeah. Keanu Elliott, all the very best in uh, Tokyo 2020. Like I said before, let's hope we're seeing you winning gold over there. Thanks for your time today. Thanks to, thanks to Ellis, Ellis Jellios for filming for us and for Helix Play Management for organising the interview as well. See you next time, guys. See ya.